uh, in this video we just gonna cover uh, uh, some options uh, which are available in the setting configuration I'm not gonna go into you know demonstrating that in this particular session I'm just gonna uh, go one by one exactly what this setting means and uh, uh, what you can use so uh, it's uh, it's going to be you know kind of a, a summary kind of a thing so I go here in folder so this is the published document path so all the published documents are here and I can add multiple uh, folders here as well and this browsable button this allows us to uh, browse the data on uh, access point if this button is uh, this option is unchecked then means that you know I will not be able to see the applications on the uh, access point and then these options are basically for uh, a cluster environment if there is a cluster environment this option will not gonna work I need to explicitly add a share folder here uh, then in documents we have document properties uh, which are related to security as well as performance uh, we can allow the document to be downloaded from the access point uh, uploading that and then we can allow one copy of the um, document so this is again uh, important for the application which are continuously being updated or uh, being updated after short inter in short intervals so it can happen that I have the copy I have opened the application but meanwhile it has got updated so if this uh, option is checked I will always get the latest data uh, it might in, uh, interfere with my selections uh, but uh, if this option is not checked uh, then I will keep working on my original application and there will be multiple uh, copies of the server unless until I close my session uh, then we have the option which is called allow to pray um, uh, allow print and export to Excel so this uh, setting is global setting for the documents then definitely in order to uh, export the data and print the data you need to have the document setting to be enabled as well uh, then server annotation allows to um, uh, comment and share and uh, uh, share uh, comments and notes uh, on server objects here this uh, and then the next option server object option this allows to uh, end user to create new sheets new charts objects on the uh, server in access point uh, you can do that development on your desktop server but if it is published here so in order to uh, allow the users you need to have this option check otherwise they will not be able to create any object or any sheet uh, so you might want to get uh, deselect set so that you know they do not create anything uh, if there is anything needs to be created you do that uh, on your desktop area and then we have session collaboration so session collaboration is that you know you uh, share a session link with other people and uh, whatever selection you do they see the same selection so it's like uh, you know uh, sharing screen trick without sharing your screen you can just share a URL and they can see what exactly you are seeing and then we have uh, allow session recovery which allow to uh, even after the session has been closed and terminated uh, you next time you open the session even tomorrow you will get the same selections that you have done previously at uh, the same state so it allows to retain the selections uh, even the session has been closed uh, then in performance we have different performance settings uh, so this these one are relevant when the server is not dedicated so we might want to reduce the use of the CPUs so that other processes can work but if it is a dedicated server leave it as is uh, and then the working set limit this is important when you are um, essentially it uh, assume that the lower limit is the minimum uh, you know 70% of the server is available for click uh, if uh, you know, so beyond the uh, uh, before this point a click does not terminate any session it keeps the session active in your uh, memory uh, so after this uh, limit has been reached the memory has been reached to this particular point uh, to 70 percent it will start uh, killing the inactive sessions uh, so um, if your sessions are not being closed you can might see that you know how the uh, memory work is working and you can reduce the size uh, and uh, then again high size so in higher side you know it uh, in this case it passively seeks to close down the session on higher side if memory uh, for example in this case if memory reaches 90 percent it actively kills the sessions uh, and uh, it can happen that you if your ram is low let's say you know your ram is let's say 8 gb or 16 gb and uh, server might be itself windows uh, processes consuming uh, half of the ram 
uh, then this setting is not good. Uh, it, you might be experiencing server choking down very frequently. So you can might want to reduce this setting so that you know whenever the click usage reaches to that level, uh, it automate reduces its um, um, uh, applications from the skills the sessions, uh, which are whichever is available. And then we have uh, here concurrent loads, and these are the maximum number of concurrent loads that we can set. Uh, by the uh, reloads uh, while you know in schedules so this option uh, is like you know uh, uh, in the morning time uh, normally uh, early morning a lot of loads happening so if you have four or five uh, scheduled at a given point in time you want, might want to increase uh, these concurrent sessions uh, but I would recommend you know go by four or five sessions my concurrent sessions that is like you know a good uh, limit to have and also that depends on your server size if your server size is very low, you might want to keep that thing to a lower level. And then we have maximum concurrent sessions. So many sessions can be open. So this is like a very high limit. Uh, but uh, you can just look at uh, your environment. You want to increase or decrease that. And then section time, session timeout in case of inactive session. Inactive means that you are not clicking. Even if it is open in front of your screen, you are not clicking just you are looking and thinking it is uh, that time is counted as inactive timeout so in this case by default is 1800 uh, seconds which is 30 minutes uh, you can reduce that by the way uh, it is uh, uh, good uh, to uh, you know uh, check the settings these same settings are available in the document level so the lower of the time will be used so if the lower time let's say here i have 30 minutes there i have 60 minutes so 30 minutes will be used and let's say here i have 30 minutes and there on the document settings there are 15 minutes then the 15 minutes so lower time inactive session time will be used um, if it both are conflicting at the document level and the global level and then the possible session timeout is basically uh, it is essentially uh, uh, as I mentioned you know if reaches at higher level so okay so at higher level which is the possible session timeout so let's say if it, it has reached the high frequency so any session which has been running for this 300 second it's gonna close and then the, there is a maximum session timeout so it's not inactive for example the total timeout if a person has been using a dashboard continuously uh, for let's say I put if I put a number here let's say I say okay 3600 settings uh, so for our one hour after one hour it's gonna close the session if even if uh, it is active uh, if there is nothing so it means that there is no limit it's unlimited uh, but uh, in case you know you might wanna um, uh, some cases you wanna put this particular uh, time limit here and then the object calculation uh, it allows you know the at times application can have big objects which takes a lot of time to calculate in memory and uh, this will give you object calculation memory timeout so you can my increase the timeout from here uh, to do that and then uh, this list this i'm gonna leave that uh, the final option is allow document auto load so if you remember uh, there is an option on the, uh, the document settings that it says preloading the document so uh, basically auto load is the global setting for preload so these are essentially the same options the difference is that uh, if i do not have this box checked and i uh, check for the preloading option it's not gonna work it should be globally enabled in order to um, uh, there to work to be load into the preloaded into the uh, cache so that, which is essentially means that at time you have applications uh, which are like you know takes a lot of time like my, in my experience in an enterprise application even take uh, four to five minutes when they are open first time but after they have been open first time the next user who comes in he like you know he can get that in 30 seconds so in this kind of scenario it can be very frustrating for the first user so you uh, preload the application in your RAM cache so whenever a person comes in even if he's the first person he will get the experience that in, you know we get the application in 30 seconds so this is uh, essentially the use case for uh, allowing document auto load so allowing here will uh, result in you know uh, choosing this option preload option from the document side then we have logging options so we can control what kind of a logging we want how frequent logging we want 
uh, and uh, how we want to split our files. So I would recommend normally daily in uh, enterprise applications uh, where uh, there is a high um, turnover, uh, high usage, so use daily. Uh, but it, it is, you know, uh, not very much used and it's very limited uh, kind of a demo server or something like that, few applications, then you can go for weekly. So, but daily or weekly options are recommended to have uh, these options for your server settings. And then you can also, uh, in terms of verbosity, low is recommended. Uh, I would say, you know, in terms of verbosity and uh, 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 the frequency, uh, try to keep as low as possible unless until the issue comes. If the issue comes, go for detailed logging. Okay. And uh, once the issue is resolved, you have troubleshooted the issues, go back to the uh, normal levels of logging. So this essentially saves a lot of time uh, and RAM uh, memory space on your disk. Okay. Then we have some security settings. Uh, which basically uh, discuss about, you know, can anonymous people uh, access that or not. And if it is anonymous is allowed, so it should be, you know, just uh, domain users or which kind of a user can access that. And then what uh, type of uh, authorization uh, should it be used from the DMS? So this is more relevant to the publisher version. Uh, not at the publisher version at the moment. So uh, we normally use the NTMS, which basically uses your um, uh, system uh, permissions. And then we have uh, uh, some options like, you know, allowing dynamic updates. So this is basically related to the macros and uh, uh, data updates. Uh, then there is a macro, uh, macro settings, how you want to interact with the macro. Um, uh, and then HTTPS uh, and HTTP settings. Uh, compressing the traffic and then should the extensions in the click queue environment be allowed or not. And then we have the alerts. So in case of your reload document failed, who should send uh, you send the email, you can write as many as email addresses. So whenever uh, we do not have the option to limit uh, which, uh, what, um, uh, essentially which application should go to which person. So it sends a blanket, uh, um, uh, alert uh, but for this alert to work you must have another setting uh, that we have in here is called mail server you have, must have smtp settings uh, i'm not gonna go on to the smtp settings here smtp settings are required in order to send the e this is kind of a e uh, email uh, uh, it's a gateway with your email engine uh, you can uh, there are a lot of documents uh, you can have smtp server with outlook or gmail or other uh, service providers so whatever service provider you are uh, working with you yeah, just go in there and check there you know what is their host name what is the port and these are kind of very standard settings that you will see uh, um, you know these two settings are normally required the rest is like very simple uh, there's nothing to be worried uh, like uh, uh, rocket science or any complex settings not there okay and then I'm going to go on to the directory part. So here you can add Active Directory or other directories. Uh, for example, if I go in here and I say, okay, add this one. So I can add the Active Directory path and then username and password of the uh, admin user. So in this way, Active Directory will be added here. And while an, 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 uh, allocating the licenses, I will be able to, uh, in license here, I will be able to uh, add those people, uh, assign the licenses from there. Okay, coming back here, uh, and there are different types. It can be an LDAP, it can be your active directory, or uh, local directory, etc. So uh, you can add any type of directory, and there can be uh, multiple directories, by the way. So for example, I can add multiple directories. So that means that a click your server can connect to multiple directories simultaneously. Okay, and then we have web server uh, settings. So in general, it's like, you know, small logging, etc. Uh, it's what port you are going to use and what is the server. Uh, if there are different server nodes, what kind of a node that you're going to use uh, for directory case in order to connect directory. So directory is responsible for authentication purposes. And then again, authentication. So it should be log on or always mean that it takes uh, your a browser login. 
So if the browser login is not uh, right, it's gonna give you a top up pop up that you know uh, you put a user again. But in case of login, uh, it's gonna you know ask you know the username and password. And it's gonna ask you to you uh, sign in. And then in case of never, it's not you know it's not going to log in. So it's kind of anonymous when you have anonymous. So it's gonna be never. And then there are different types of authentication. It can be network based or it can be header or custom user. And um, um, then we have login page. So we can customize the login page. So this is essentially this is one of the options where we say okay, uh, we can customize the login page with our user uh, branding uh, or um, uh, our website branding etc. So we can customize logos uh, over there. Uh, so it's essentially if I click on there, it will show me, you know, what is the page where this form is actually present with that team. And I can go there in this particular folder and change all the uh, parameters over there if I have some web, uh, web development skills. And then this is essentially access point related settings. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, um, access point uh, um, um, client I'm going to use is ajax is preferred or plugin is preferred normally we use ajax uh, but definitely if it's internet explorer it's going to use that and then this is setting this is interesting setting uh, that you know a new click if you click on uh, application should it open a new window or should it use the same window so it's gonna or should it reuse the new window so by reusing the new windows the first time if you open an application it's gonna open a new window but if you open another application so it's gonna use the windows you just recently opened so at any given point in time you will only be having one uh, window unless until you explicitly open a new tab uh, for the applications and uh, yeah then there is ejax and web settings so i'm not gonna go into those details for now and then we have uh, server license servers this is just an information and then in, in licenses we have the option how you um, uh, you can enter licenses uh, here and you can allocate different uh, named cal and uh, um, uh, you will see the history of who is using uh, and you can also limit the number of cals and this gives me the server overview that i have uh, which is essentially my computer information uh, and then i have this lock collector option uh, where I can enter from to date to date and uh, I can export the logs into zip file and that can be sent over to other people who are helping you or experts or even uh, you can send that to ClickFox uh, if you are working, your work, they are working on a case of yours and you are trying to troubleshoot. So um, this one is a very overview. I have uh, tried to explain each and every single point. Uh, there are other videos which uh, in which I have talked about for each point I have actually shown the demo exactly how you can do that so if you are interested in more details go to a specific video of that particular area uh, 